Yeah, what's happening? Hello, Mark. Not much. Just sitting in my workshop on this fine spring day. Oh, yeah? What are you doing in the workshop? <laughs> well, I'm meeting with you uh, to talk about... <laughs> to talk about what it is I do in this workshop. But yeah, this is my space. The mess. Yeah, so <laughs> so you are um a hat maker, a craft a cra like not even I guess craft is would be uh is kind of a word that people use for hobbies. This is more of a a new uh, career path, I guess. So explain what it is that you do. Yeah, it's funny. I actually uh, call myself a professional arts and crafter. Um, this is what I do for money, but I run a small business in Squamish called All and Extra, and I make fleece toques and jewelry. And you're wearing one, and I'm wearing one, and you've probably seen them around BC. That's where most of my my customers live. But yeah, it's been uh, four years now that I've been making fleece hats. Awesome. Well, you have been on the Low Pressure Podcast in the past, in uh, 2019, yeah. on episode 122. Had you started this then? I hadn't. I had a different little side hustle going at that time, and I was upcycling clothing and making jewelry, mm -hmm. but it wasn't called All End Extra. I think at that point it was called Dollars and Cents, which is really funny <laughs> to look back on, but <laughs> yeah, always wanted to have a little side hustle. Awesome. So this is uh, this is really taking off. So, you know, I, I talked to you. I saw that these hats were kind of the the hot thing. It's it, they really are the hot thing. As soon as soon as anybody can get their hands on them, they're all over them. So this is this is a hot commodity. So I was like, I want to get on board this train. So I reached out to you and was like, Hey, let's do a collaboration. As you can see, we got the uh, the LPP label here. But uh, I'd love to find out a little bit more about like how it got started, a little bit more like what what the business is, where it's taking you. So like, where did you actually start this? So I started this in 2019. Um, COVID obviously kind of <laughs> changed my whole life. At that point, I was in school for hospitality and tourism, and the industry basically got canceled. So I was like, <laughs> what am I gonna do? Like ski season's coming quick. I got to make some money. Um, so I actually started off by making masks during the pandemic and that's kind of where like my sewing passion came from. And then like that winter, um, I was like, okay, I should probably like make something that resonates with the ski community. That is like all my friends and an industry I've been in for a long time. And I've always loved headwear because it's something that you can like change every day. Most people have like one kit that they wear all winter long and the only way to express yourself is through like a different hat. So I started making these like super bespoke, unique fleece toques and started on Instagram and then it kind of exploded and I started a website and now we're here four years into it. So it's pretty crazy. That's pretty cool. Where uh, where did the idea for like these specific hats, like uh, what am I wearing? What's this one called? That one's called the, the Peak, Peak Throne. The peak throne, and isn't it like patent pending design? Like, yeah. where did you come up with this design? Like, how did you come up with the idea to do this? Were you just mucking around on the on the sewing machine one day, and yeah, this so just I developed. <laughs> yeah, so I actually um, during pan the pandemic, I was like thrifting a lot of fabrics and fleece, and I bought this like massive king size blanket, and I made a tracksuit, and then I had a little bit left over, and I was like, oh, I should make a hat and some like mittens. And my mom's an artist, and she actually used to make toques back in the day. So a lot of my inspiration uh, for this entire business is from my mom. Right on. So you have a unique way of getting these out to people, too. Like, it's it's they're limited because um, they're, it's limited basically only to your own <laughs> ability to create them. Because uh, as of right now, you make them all yourself, correct? Yeah, so it things move so fast around here and because it's just me making all the hats um i will say actually i've this year had four people helping me at one time because i was like i cannot ski and do everything i need to do in my life and spend 24 hours a day behind my sewing machine which is like kind of what it took last year mm -hmm. um so thankfully i have some wonderful friends in the sea of sky in vancouver and i was like I'm going to share the wealth with people in my community who love sewing and want to help me out. And it's been an amazing way to like 
just connect with people and again, share the wealth. And, um, yeah, I do these drops. So what well, once a month I try and do a made to order drop. And I think doing made to order is definitely what's like setting me apart from a lot of other makers trying to make fleece toques. Um, I offer a completely customizable product. So you come on my website, there's like six different styles to pick from and then over 30 fabrics, and you can pick your size, your style, and the colors that you want for your hat. Um, and then I do like 100 to 150 slots per drop, depending on how much time I have uh, for that month. And then because my space here in Squamish is so limited, I do everything in one step. So the way these drops work, I open up, I get all the orders, I write down all the orders, then I have to cut everything. Once I'm done cutting, I clean up, I start sewing. Once the sewing's done, I'll do all the shipping. So this is just a way for me to like stay organized and do everything in like an efficient way. But when I first started, it was not like that. I was like, I'll cut one hat and sew it, you know, and now I'm like, that's not efficient at all. So you live and you you've, learn. <laughs> you've turned it more into an assembly line. You're, you're really uh, evolving <laughs> as a business and, and, you know, the hats themselves, um, have becoming more and more popular people froth for them because um, mm -hmm. you said that they sell out pretty quickly yeah most drops i never get my hopes up but most drops um, they sell out in about half an hour to an hour wow. so it's really quick and i do my best to tell people that they move quickly without you know sounding super cocky about it but it's definitely been amazing to see how supportive people are and how people wait and it's like such a rush when the website's open because I'm on the back end and I'm like oh my god there's like over 400 people on the website and it's 6 p.m and there's no way all 400 people are going to get hats so it's like whoever is quickest to get it in their in their cart and check out and then you know most drops they get dms people are like I missed out I had a hat in my cart and I didn't get it in time and I'm like oh. okay I'm so sorry. Wow, you know? for real? And then for those people, do you put them on like a priority list for the next one? I don't, uh, just because the demand has always been so large that I, I just know that I can't supply all of it at one time. So it does kind of trickle into the next drop, which is why I think like every drop does well, because there's always new people coming. And honestly, like word of mouth has been so huge. Mm -hmm. Um and it's I a think smart business move, yeah. smart business move. Keep people, yeah. keep people wanting. So like trying to buy your hats is like trying to buy a Taylor Swift concert tickets. Pretty much. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're based in Squamish and, um, so the, um, you think you're going to be able to expand? Are you going to keep going out of your little studio there? You said you hired a few people. Is it planning to get a little bit bigger or do you want to kind of keep, this level of of um of desire and and hype going like you know keep things limited to keep the keep the desire high yeah or do you that's... want to be able to or do you want to be able to like pay some more bills and get everybody the hat that they want yeah that's a great question um i'm definitely going through some pretty like significant growing pains uh, at the moment and trying to figure out my manufacturing and how i want it to go moving forward but i think for me if I can continue to share the wealth with my friends and people in my community who love sewing, then that's what I'll do. And, you know, keeping my overhead what, like at a bay and at low is important to me as well, because just because you get bigger and produce more doesn't mean you're actually going to make more money. Like I looked into getting a studio space here in Squamish. And as most people know, the Sea to Sky is one of the most expensive places to have space. So I'd be looking at having to produce like twice, if not three times as much as I'm producing right now, just to like be profitable, especially when it comes down to like labor costs and all of the things that you have to consider with the business. So yeah, trying to keep it at like this medium, medium size where things are still hard to get and it's still special, you know, and like I said before, doing the made to order, like that's only me. I'm the only one who can do that right now. So, and I think again, that's what sets me apart. So just taking all of that into, into consideration, like I have no idea yet where this is going to go, but when I started it, I didn't expect it to go to where it is now. So 
It's exciting, but it's also a little bit scary. That's exciting. So do you see this or some um, some shape of this becoming your like full-time job? It kind of is now, but yeah. is it something that you see yourself doing in the future? Are you going to be this person? And in the back of your mind, do you already have ideas on other products and other lines? Like, Are, are you thinking long-term with this company or is this a now thing? I'm definitely thinking long term. Um, I've always had a pretty strong entrepreneurial desire. So for this to be going so well and for me to have found like my niche is a really great sign and something I definitely want to run with. Uh, but when it comes to, yeah, long term, like for sure, I'd love to do this forever. And the best part about toques and headwear and apparel is that things are constantly changing in the industry. So there's always room for improvement. There's always room for new designs. Things are trendy right now. That's awesome. I'm trying to just run with the trend, but I'm ready for the trend to die if it ever does. And I'm ready to shift and adapt. And I, I'm i excited for the future. I'd love to make clothing. You know, I'd love to make fleece apparel. I'd love to do more, like merch. I'd, there's lots of options. And honestly, I think that's what gets me the most excited about having my own business is that it's like endless and all an extra. I kind of picked it as like the brand name because it's this umbrella term for like no rules. It encapsulates encaps everything that I could possibly want to do. So part of me is like, I'd love to do craft camps. I'd love to do ski camps. I'd love to do, I don't know, it's endless. So I'm excited for the future for sure. That's cool. Like creating a, a, a staple line of like hats or something like this that can sustain themselves, but then be able to branch out and keep yourself interested in it as well. I love the idea of um, a matching full sweatsuit or fleece yeah. sweatsuit with a matching hat, with a matching tube, matching beanie. That sure. would be pretty fantastic. Those would sell like that. Yeah. A the full hard... set. Right. I know. The hard part about getting into garments is definitely being inclusive with sizing and that is a whole nother a whole nother realm of sewing and like drafting patterns and doing everything so it's something i'd love could to be. do but it's going to take some serious forethought to uh to do it properly yeah that could be a super limited drop you know do like a run of 10 mm -hmm. and then charge them charge a lot for them so people have like the full <laughs> the full fancy suit the or if kit. someone came to you as a has anybody come to you for, um, you know, I came to you and said, hey, let's do a collab. But if someone wanted to come to you and did like a, a, like a commission, like a one-off, say, hey, I want three full flea suits to match the hat that I have. How much is that going to cost me? Would you do that? I would do it if I had the time. So that's the biggest, that's a really big problem for me at the moment right now is just like, I have so many ideas but I don't have any time to like to pursue any of them. So then it comes down to like finding the help so that I can hand over the hats and and continue creating and continue designing because it's my brain definitely works that way. And it's it's hard sometimes to like turn the ideas off and be like, no, you got to focus on making the 150 hats that just sold. So that's priority right now. And like sewing for pleasure. I definitely miss doing that. But yeah, if you know, I get a lot of DMs, people asking, can you make me a sweater? Can you make me this? And I'm like, I would love to, but don't have the time. Don't have the capacity. Either that or you just set your price to a point where it does make sense for you. May not for them, but maybe sure. it does. And you're like, well, actually, if you're, you're, you're actually going to pay this? Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, when you need it, bye. Yeah. It's going to take me three weeks or a, a month or whatever, right? Totally. Uh, but it's exciting. It's a, uh, you know, this is the stage of a company where it's exciting. It's scary. It's hard. It's frustrating. It's overwhelming. But this is that that precipice where you're just about to go over the edge into this amazing growth or maybe this amazing new um, space. Uh, and it seems like you have the energy for it still. And I think yeah. what you're doing is really exciting. Um, so where can people go and um, get information about what you have, your products, and when the drops might be? Yeah, so the best place to get updates is definitely on Instagram. And my Instagram account is called All and Extra. Um, and yeah, I post a lot on there about upcoming drops. And there's lots of inspiration on hats I've made in the past. So it's kind of like a lookbook. Um, and then you can always just send me an email at allandextra at gmail.com. Um, 
and yeah, I do my best to share as much information and make things as clear as possible. So check that out for sure. And I have a website, ben. but it's usually closed yeah, the... because <laughs> it's only open during the drops, which is kind of crazy, but it's all in. Can you not, ha, do you not, how come you don't have the website open just with no ability to purchase anything just for information and, and people can scroll and look? Um, I mean, sometimes I do after a drop and then I'll close it like a couple of days before the drop just so that I can do all the updates on the back end because I actually sell jewelry as well, which is really popular in the summer. And that's kind of obviously hats are kind of seasonal. So that fills my time. Um, but yeah, I like to do one thing at a time. And it's a little stressful when I'm getting orders for jewelry and I'm like at the cutting table. So like I said, everything's like done in steps. So it's just an easy way for me to like manage that. Okay. So make sure you follow uh, the Instagram account. Uh, all an extra to get information on the drops. I think uh, as when this is being released, you had just done a drop last night, uh, but we're about to do a drop of pre-made hats that you did for us at the Low Pressure Podcast with our Low Pressure Podcast badge. We've got about 50 hats, and they will be going on sale Thursday evening, the 21st of March, uh, which you'll be able to get at the Low Pressure Podcast website. Heck yeah. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. I'm glad that you're doing so well and people are so fired up about it. And um, you're only going to keep growing and we'd love to help you do that. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. And yeah, thanks so much for the opportunity to create something special for the LPP. I love your podcast. I listen to it all the time while I'm sewing. I love the hats. They're warm and nice and they look cool. I didn't know if I, I didn't know if it was my thing, but I'm like, yeah, it works. It works. Definitely it looks works. Good. <laughs> awesome. Hey, thanks, Dre. Congratulations on um, the success and hopefully it keeps going. Thank you so much, Mark. We'll talk soon.